Today on The Zoo, we're getting the nitty gritty on dating boundaries on social media. We're talking LA collab, and we've got the ladies of Bloody Maria and Mr. Eddie Martinez from The Sinner. So don't you move anywhere. This is The Zoo. Oh my goodness, oh, oh your girl. Ears. Okay, oh. Well, oh. grandma status, grandma oh. status. Okay, folks, welcome to the zoo. Three, two, one, wow. Oh my goodness, girl. I'm not gonna lie, I need a knee brace. You okay? <laughs> that hurt. You need some CBD oil. <laughs> <laughs> you need something, something relaxing. Yeah, something relaxing. Speaking of relaxing things, let's talk about dating boundaries right here on <laughs> The Big Deal. <laughs> So, I mean, people, you know, now with social media being like an everyday use thing, I mean, 10 years, maybe maybe like 20 years ago, people, you know, were using other mediums uh, to date, actually going out to the bar. But now, exactly. I mean, people are using apps. They're even using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to hook up with each other. Um, do you think that sometimes people push the boundaries mm -hmm. online when it comes to dating? Yeah. Yes. Have you guys experienced any of this stuff before? Yes. Yeah. Like, who has gotten nasty, freaky, diggy with you? <laughs> okay, that's why I took off my Snapchat. I don't have it for. I don't have. Oh, you don't have public. a Snapchat anymore. I have a Snapchat, but I don't have it for the public. Like nobody Ooh, can send me things. Why? Anymore. Why? Because I was getting disgusting <clears throat> videos. Eggplant videos. Very much. I just meal. Very much. It wasn't just a picture. It was a video in action. Girl. I was like, ew, mommy. Did they know at the time? Were you in a relationship? I was in a relationship. And they knew. Yeah, I would like. Men I, don't care. No. Men do not care. Men care. No, yeah. but I'm talking about the other men. When oh, they, you know, in a yeah, boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all about them and their chorizo. That's oh. all they care about. They don't care. Well, right. women are the same way sometimes too, so it goes both ways. But yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was disgusting. So. Yeah. And what about you, Nikki? Have oh, you experienced some of this before? Oh, have I? And I'm so needy. I love every compliment. Oh, you'll, you'll take every eggplant video. I got something this week that somebody said somebody wanted to eat ice cream out of my butt. And I was ew, like, ew, oh, ew. I was my like, God. why waste the ice cream? To each his own, though, because maybe, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that so weird? <laughs> but were you in a relationship at the time? I've never been in a relationship. Oh, Isn't God. that a shocker? Okay, no, 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 it's not. I have to tell you, I, I, I'm, I look at the following page. Okay. I'm one of those people, I like to see what people are liking. Sure. And what I find, is I'm horrified. Because people, even if you're in a relationship, you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, people are still looking at all these porn stars, yeah. all these girls in bathing uh -huh. suits, uh -huh. you know. So is liking cheating? I don't Well, that's a good point. Think that's a good. So. Um, I don't know. You know, lately I've been getting messages from a guy that I had been chit chatting with like 10 years ago. And he's always throwing flowers at me. Handsome, cutie, this, that. And I'm like, this guy wants to go on a date. Like, I haven't seen this guy in years. Uh -huh. Lo and behold, I click on his profile and I see married to so-and-so. Uh. And I'm like, you're married? I had no, like, I was blindsided, guys. I had no idea this guy was married. And I'm just thinking to myself, does To his, a guy or a girl? To a guy. He's, you know, okay. he's a guy. Um, but I'm thinking, either they have an open relationship, they're either open-minded, or I don't know if I don't know if I if it's, my man if, I don't know if I would like it if my man no. was using those types of phrases nope. when talking to another guy. No, no, I can't. Is, is I it me? That. No, no, I'd I be very. Or is it like flirting? You'd have that no is fingers. That's flirting. That is flirting. <laughs> I experienced that. My ex is my ex for that reason. Like I would catch this guy commenting on all these women's pages, which women obviously that are nothing but fitness models, right? But literally uh -huh. just showing mm -mm and everything. Right. But it was comments like, oh my God, I wish those eyes were looking at me that way. Right. Um, little kissy faces, like inappropriate things that for me, I was like, Wait, that but is did he so personally know these women? No, he didn't. He didn't but know But it still bothered you? Of course it bothered me. Okay. Cause like some of them maybe whatever, had a million followers or whatever, but some okay. of them were just like random girls that he just followed that probably had like 300, I don't know. It right. doesn't matter if he knew them or not. The fact that he was just putting that, I felt it was very disrespectful towards me. Like it you is. have no, you have no respect towards the woman you're because with. Because I sometimes think that it's a bit different, but a bit different when you flirt with somebody online that you don't know versus someone that you do know. Yeah. Like if you put a, like I don't know, if I put, um, Papi, I love you to Matt Bomer, you know, on his page. I mean, I know that he's in a relationship, but like he's like my husband in my head. You know, it's like and he's famous and he's famous. You know. So it's like I mean, well, is he really gonna pay well, attention to me? He wasn't like commenting on Jessica Alba's picture. But it the was comments like is what would annoy me because it's one thing to like to actually verbally write something out. Yeah. Like that's like that. Everybody can see that. And putting certain emojis. Like what is it? People put uh, the peach emojis for someone's ass, ass right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, clearly <laughs> that's what you're looking at right now. And then boobs. Like it's just so disrespectful. Like okay. I, yeah. I so don't you don't even care if it's kind of like a fantasy type of flurry. How know? would you see? 
How would I say? Then she was spying on him. Um, no, 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 no. I used to work for his um, his restaurant, his family restaurant, right? Okay. So I was in charge of their Instagram page, which he used to manage on his, like, he used to manage the Instagram page. So everybody that he followed on that, he also followed on his personal thing. Sure. So they 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 collided. Like, I would go on the, the, the what is it, the restaurant page, sure. and his stuff would pop up. Uh, Cause they're the same girls that he's following on both pages. Okay. So stuff would pop up, and I would see a comment of like, "Damn, oh. mama. and I was like, "Are you that dumb? Like, yes, I, are you that yeah. dumb? Like, hello, stupid." But yeah, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. Just, I think it's just very disrespectful, whether sure. you know them or you don't. Especially if you do know them, like, come on now. Where's Nikki? Respect? Can you spill the beans on your love life? Sure. What do you really? What do you want to know? I don't know. I mean, have you ever been in a in a scandalous situation where you know perhaps somebody that is in a relationship has flirted with you or tried to make a move on you? Perhaps. Um. I, yes. And I have to tell you, at this point in my life, I now set a boundary. Like, because what, what kind of boundary? What, what is because your boundary? Because you know, I don't want to be the other woman or other young man. Oh. You know. So I feel like if you're not going to be completely devoted to me, I'm not going to flirt with you and then you go home to watch Netflix with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. So, but, but what is it about that that bothers you, though? About being the side chick? Um, I, well, I'm not the side chick to those, to those listening. <laughs> um, if you were to be the side chick. Right, you know? well, I have been. Oh, but okay. I'm not anymore, shall okay. I say. I think that social media, I think you're put, you see so many people that you would have never seen before. And especially if you're cheating on me, you know what I mean? You should have to send like a, a written letter, like the good old days with a quill. If you're gonna cheat on me, it takes three months to do. Everything is so immediate now with social oh, media. Oh, I agree. Yeah, 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 it's immediate. Like, I mean, I can go on an app and find somebody that's 500 feet away and cheat with them, you know, if I really yeah. wanted my to. My neighbor, not. please. Yeah. I found out. What? What happened with your neighbor? My Tell neighbor. Are you, are you talking about Grinder? Well, yeah. I found out my grind. My uh, my neighbor is having a lot of people over. I don't, How I did don't you find out that your neighbor is having a lot of people because over? Because I, I did the math. <laughs> I looked at the distance. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can you say glory yeah, hole like a... on? No. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, what yeah. happened? Elaborate on this, please. I found out through ground that my neighbor has a glory hole. And men just are yeah. going oh, into Oh, yeah. So my grandparents are like, how's, how's your neighborhood? I'm like, holy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, hopefully the rest of this show will be holy as well. <laughs> Keep it live right now, so we'll have more for you. Don't go anywhere. Anyone in the world could have the next best story. And so why not? you know, connect those people with content creators who are so desperately looking for the next best story. And we are back on the zoo and there is something that all three of us here have in common and I'm not sure if my other two co-hosts are aware of that one thing that we have in common. I'm not aware, Beauty. please inform me. <laughs> Beauty, yes, that's one. <laughs> but there's another one. Um, We're minorities, folks. We're minorities, uh, Latinos, gays. At some point in Hollywood, we've been, you know, just the friend, the side role. The airline attendant. The airline attendant, you know. <laughs> the and, extra that just smiles on camera. <laughs> yes, you know, and there's lack of represent representation of, yeah. uh, you know, of, of our communities. And so that brings us to, you know, today's topic, which is um, about LA Collab. Uh, one of our correspondents actually went to cover this, and it's this whole initiative. Have you guys heard about this, by the way? Mm -hmm. oh, Slightly, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, LA Collab is this initiative being put together by Mayor Eric Garcetti here in LA okay. to pretty much Get more Latinos specifically. Sorry, uh, Nikki. <laughs> I know that you were looking you for look the Latino. gay Italians, okay. you know. Um, yeah, to get more Latinos both in front of and behind the camera. And it's important. Being, yeah, it's really important that like a, a major publicist from AEM is uh, behind this initiative as well. And one of the founders of Me Too, not like okay. Me Too, like M E T O O, but yeah. M I T U, right. Beatriz Acevedo, she's also uh, working with mm. the. Uh, why, why boo? I'm just oh, somebody's scandalous back there is throwing <laughs> some shade at Miss Acevedo. Anyhow, uh, I'm yeah, an Acevedo. Uh, you're an, are you an Acevedo? Yeah. Why? From your dad? My mom. No, your mom. Okay. My mom, yeah. Are you related to her? To be honest? Maybe. I'm going to go find out. Maybe I can be part of this whole LA collab. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, there's a, like big people, even um, Eva Longoria. You know, they had a big press conference. Oh, right, I did yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that it's really necessary for, I mean, now the mayor is buckling down and it is like, we're going to get the Latinos in front of and behind the camera. Definitely, especially LA being such a hot spot with so many Latinos. Right. Like, like I'm not, I, I'm still like shook how we don't have our faces put in front of the cameras and behind the cameras as, as much. much. Yeah, as much. Except for LA TV. I, I was just going to say that, but I do love that LA TV, everybody in here, it, 
everyone is from everywhere, all yeah. Latino America, which is yeah. beautiful. So it's important. I think there needs to be more representation, you know, across all walks of life, but especially in this instance, it's super important. And well, we're moving forward, so I think it's just what you mentioned is a little bit ironic because LA is like the number one Latino market in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I mean, people come here and they're like, oh, I wish I knew more Spanish so that I could communicate more with the like, which to me, I take, I, I take that for granted because I know Spanish already. So I'm just yeah. like, well, you really can't communicate with people here. And then I'm like, oh, it's because you're, you know, you're gringo, you're not <laughs> Latino. <laughs> but the irony of that is that, yeah, we're here. There are so many of us yet. We're not, you know, we don't have those positions of power in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. which I think is a little bit insane. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. And the tide's about to turn. The tide is about to turn. We're going to have our own Tyler Perry. <laughs> We're going to find out more <laughs> about Perez. LA Collab right now. So check this out. Okay, guys, we're here with beautiful Ivana de Maria, who's not only beautiful, it's really smart and a hustler. And she's one of the people behind La Collab. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of La Collab. I think that um, it's precisely what the word stands for, right? Collaboration. Well, this is one in which uh, it really focuses in on helping each other, mentoring each other and getting uh, young people into the industry. Anyone in the world could have the next best story. And so why not, you know, connect those people with content creators who are so desperately looking for the next best story. I personally, um, I'm collaborating with Storyplace, uh, Storyplace Studio specifically, which is a platform where people share their stories uh, specifically to connect with content creators and get those stories made. And it's really designed to help people that are not so familiar with writing or writing professionally to guide them throughout this process of telling your story in a way. And the system creates a treatment for you. So you don't actually need to you know, quit your job and learn about film and do all these crazy things that people say. It's just you share your story and get story by credit. Work with people who are professionals at this and getting that story developed into content. And it's that easy. We have Los Angeles. Uh, Film Institute, which uh, has a youth cinema project, and uh, it teaches more than right now. There are more 1,400 students across California that are in the program, and they're learning how to make film. And it sounds easy and simple, you know, just no, no, no big deal. But what has happened? It's become the single most effective um, teaching method for the 21st century. It's become very, very positive, very, very strong. And people who are kids that have been in the program, I can't say enough about it. It's, it is a future. You know, there's nothing that says, you know, you have to make Latino films, you have to use Latino directors on it. So what I say is that we have to build our own system. And so uh, sooner or later, we're going to have our own uh, networks. We're going to have our own uh, uh, film studios and our own distribution arms. And that's when they're really going to start to try to team up with us. A lot of people live with this fear of not helping somebody else because that's going to take away from them. It's not true. It's not true. Prosperity mentality. Exactly. And I think that's what, it, what, what this stands for, really. You know, we get bored in between segments and we do all sorts of hand gestures here at the zoo. So why don't you try this at home while we wait for our next segment with the ladies of Bloody Maria. Don't go anywhere, folks, okay? <laughs> Wow, I've never seen Mexican girls in this aspect. Okay. And I realized it's because we haven't been allowed to be in certain spaces, like camp. Sure. You know, if we extend outside of our box, people are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what are you trying to do? You're not explaining who you are to us all the time. And I'm right. like, no, I don't want to explain anymore. So let's introduce you to our audience. We're going to start off with Edis or Iris. Which one do you prefer, honey? <laughs> what I was given by my godparents and my grandparents and my parents was Iris. Okay. But I'm open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Iris Alvarez. And then we've got um, mm. Marilyn Sanabria. Yes. And you are the producer of the film, is that correct? Uh, one of the creators and the director and the producer, yes. Okay, and then Marilyn is playing a big old Hollywood <laughs> starlet in this movie. Lupe Vélez. Right. Who is from, I said the silent era, but she's from she the started, golden. She did start in the silent era and then she became popular. Well, she had a series, The Mexican Spitfire, right. with RKO, who uh, I like to say Lucille Ball was also with RKO, but doing very serious films at the time. Mm. Lupe passed in 1944 
And if you look at Lupe's films and if you look at Lucille Ball's TV show, you will see... The similarities. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, I have to dig deep into I'm the archive. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Okay, yeah. Let's throw some shade over there, honey. No, no. I love, I love that the show has a haunted spirit that comes out Thank through. Thank you. Yes. So, well, tell people about the project, first of all, so yeah. they can get a feel for what exactly Bloody Mary is. Or Maria. So that is right, Bloody Maria. Uh, so we like to say uh, Lupe Velez's spirit, the night she committed suicide, mm -hmm. is uh, yeah. caught into a enchanted mirror by Bloody Maria. Okay. And then unleashed on a Catholic school in East LA a hundred years later. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a dark high school comedy. With Chola. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like Mi Vida Loca meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer with a 70s B-movie twist. Yes I, yes, I totally see that one, especially in the social media and the clothing and everything. Yeah, thank you. The uh, synopsis me, had me giggling because okay. the two girls were fighting over the same joystick. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I read correctly. It happens. What was it the happens. character? Little Sleeps? It, it, little Sleeps. Little Sleeps. Little Sleeps. Yeah, little Not Sleeps. Little Sleeps. Yeah. Little Sleeps. Little Sleeps. Little Watch that joystick. <laughs> so classy. Yeah. Yes. It's a very, very classy, classy show. I mean, I'm not wicked. I was Catholic. It can't be. I like Catholic. What? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing about it being campy is that yeah. uh, some friends who have seen it who are not Latino uh -huh. who said, wow, I've never seen Mexican girls in this. Scenario. Aspect. Okay. And I realized it's because we haven't been allowed to be in outside of, we haven't been allowed to be in certain spaces like camp. Sure. You know, like there's, like meatballs or all those things. They're, if we extend outside of our box, people are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What are you trying to do? You're not explaining who you are to us all the time. And I'm right. like, no, I don't want to explain anymore. Well, it's almost like the <laughs> horror genre. I really don't see any English language films that have Latino leads. Kind of like this because this has a, you know, a very spiritual, if you want to call it that, um, aspect to it. There's definitely that because we also have a, uh, a fictional deity that is a Catholic deity appropriated, appropriating a, uh, a Mexica Aztec goddess. Okay. I don't want to like call out <laughs> Catholic deities, <Sure>. but <laughs> so it's definitely got some of those aspects within uh, supernatural, uh, spiritual. I think that in our l literature. We're able to extend further, like Isabella Ende or uh, Sandra Cisneros. Sure, yeah, but yeah. But for some reason, with film, we're trapped. Well, especially in English language film, yes. I feel. You know, I feel like in Spanish language media, we experimented with all sorts of genres, but in the American market, it's been a whole different story. There's usually more economics behind the productions in, outside of our country. And within our country, you have uh, working class or lower income people trying to break through. Right. And we're not coming from the upper class higher echelon, like some of the more awarded and recognized filmmakers from other countries. That's a very good point, though. I think that's really interesting that you I feel that like you I don't want to jump on you. <laughs> and Iris, you had a very interesting I upbringing. Back. You, you, know, I can you talk. overcame homelessness and financial troubles. Looking oh, wow. back, yeah. what would you say to that young girl? When she was first starting really out. That's a really good point because <laughs> outside I was meditating and I was thinking about unconditional love and it was like the moment, you know, walking with my grandma in El Monte where I grew mm -hmm. up with my grandma and I was like, wow, I received unconditional love for her, from her that helped guide me through homeless. Mm -hmm. I experienced homelessness as a child okay. and I also went uh, to juvenile hall and my mother was on drugs and schizophrenic and that's a whole nother thing. Right, right. But, uh, uh, That's why she wears like, those what boots. would I say to that young girl? It's really hard because, you know, you can't put on that young girl, lift yourself up by the bootstraps mm -hmm. if there's not someone there to help her along the way. Yeah. And I was fortunate that my father was, you know, my mom was an ex -chola, my dad was a, a Chicano activist from UCLA. Okay. And so I was fortunate that I went to live with my father and uh, then became a uh, I had access to education. Got it. So that was like the turning point in your life. So if they often say if that, you know, a kid who is experiencing some sort of hardship as a child, if they have one adult that can see them and help and not just help, but just see them and give them that validation that that makes the difference. Now, will yeah. these young ladies in your series have a paternal figure that will turn their lives around and get them out of this insanity? <laughs> That would be Sister Cara de Poco Amigos. Oh, yeah, I've seen the sister <laughs> on Instagram. She's awesome. 
But she's like a, she's like a real character. She's not a ghost or anything on the, on no, the show. No, and she's actually one of the creators, and she's hilarious. Okay. Uh, Stephanie St. Sanchez from Houston, Texas. Okay. She's super awesome, uh, you know, fighting the good fight, LGBTQ style in Texas. Wait, you know? I thought you were going to say as a nun. I'm like, no, oh, my goodness. No, she's like in <laughs> Texas Breaking fighting. She, in in Texas. In Texas. Too. And and so she's a super awesome, talented young wo uh, woman, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and so she she sort of is the Van Van Helsink. Okay, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, and and so there is there will be the journey to understanding. Uh, who Lupe, why has Lupe come back to torment oh. the young ladies? <laughs> Which is really interesting because I've, I've, um, Lupe has been in my life for a very, very long time. There was one point I wanted to do a one woman show based on Lupe and then oddly enough came, became cast in this oh, wow. great project. Um, and I'm really excited about bringing her uh, her history, her story, okay. back into Hollywood. And spirit, because yes. you really, are, like she came in and she got it. Okay. Like she understood yeah. what we were doing. Well, we're going to talk more about that spirit when we come back from this commercial break. Guys, don't move anywhere. We'll be back with more Bloody Maria. She was a trailblazer, and she was a woman who would not conform to the norm. Right. So if we're talking about women... Trauma zero. Yes. She's the first, and right. it was the first Latina if, rebel. If we're talking about <laughs> women empowerment, this is a very big example, and I think due to the way she died, mm -hmm. uh, I believe she wants, to, she wants to be brought back. The studio has been, I don't know, taken over by a spirit. Yes, and it's haunted. It's chilling in here. Chilling. <laughs> chilling. There's a giraffe in the distance. And Lupe. Lupe. I know Leo. No doubt. We believe in her. We yes. believe that yes. she's yes. like, do it. Wait a second. No. Does, we believe in her. I'm, I'm gonna, this is a serious question. Yeah. Have you guys had any sort of paranormal experiences on location <gasps> or on set? Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. No, please talk. No, to please. Okay. We want to get so. the school. One. Oh, Jesus. Okay. You. Do you have any that you want to say first? Well, I have. Um, there was one. Uh, I, I believe that these coincidences, especially when you pray for them, are no longer mm -hmm. coincidences, and there are more messages. Okay. And um, I was praying to Lupe uh, precisely about this project, and I asked her a very right. specific question. I said, do you? Do you want me to really tell your story and uh, really bring your spirit back? Because she committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I, I, and the story has it that after she committed suicide, then she realized, you know, it was a very, very, uh, it was a very hard death. And she sure. wanted to die a very beautiful death. And it didn't happen that way. So in the interim of her, of her as she was dying, she realized she didn't want to anymore. And she was fighting to, mm. to come back. Sure. You know, she was fighting How did to she reverse. Kill yeah. you don't... She drank 92 second old pills wow. with and a shot of brandy. Wow. Brandy. And the story Just is to take the edge off. And the right. story is that she had this glamorous death prepared, almost like her final farewell. Right. But then, like, there's like those Hollywood tabloids that say like she puked and she uh, vomited and she fell in the toilet. Yeah. And it was like she wound up having a disgraceful right, death. Right, right. Yes. And so we're trying to find some sort of redemption in both of those. Also, so th uh, this was a very, va very talented woman who a lot of people Comedian. don't know. And She's she also did funny. drama as well. She even did right. Broadway. Nobody knows. Everybody who, they, who you mentioned, Lupe, might know of the Mexican Spitfire films, but they don't know how committed and devoted sure. she actually was to her craft and she, how she was a trailblazer and she was a woman who would not conform to the norm. Right. So if we're talking about Chama women... Zero. Yes, she's the first, and right. it was the first Latina if, rebel. If we're talking about <laughs> women empowerment, this is a very big example, and I think due to the way she died, mm -hmm. uh, I believe she wants to she wants to be brought back. Wait, so what sign did yeah, she give yeah, you? Yeah, what is yes. it? What was the message? Oh my God! So how did she get to you? Okay, like, you just so that night, <laughs> you, you can't. Can. Okay, so, 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 so I was out in a public spot, and I had told Lupe, "Give me a sign tonight." Okay. If you're listening, uh oh. And uh, I met this woman, uh -huh. and I said, "Hey, what's your name?" And she looked at me. I'm not kidding. She said, "Lupe." No. Oh. And I mean, come on. Yeah. I've been on Hollywood like, Boulevard, like, and I looked know, down, and it was you, Lupe's star. 
Yes. It okay. okay. happened on my birthday last year. Wait a second. Okay. Wow. Wow. This yes. lady answered this question on top of Lupe's star. Is that what you're saying? No. 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 Two no. different things. Two different stories. Just she just went stories. everywhere. Hasta la sopa. What you guys do now? You create. You create yes. energy. Yes. You do. Yes. You do. Okay. Yeah. Everything is energy, and you know it's not. It, it's not spooky. You know, uh, spooky stuff. Uh, meaningless stuff. It's actually energy, and I do believe that we have the spirit of Lupe working with us. So if Lupe saw the happy. film, what do you think she'd think? I think she'd think it's hilarious. Yeah. I think she would be like, but well, see, the thing with like the Me Too movement and all that yeah. stuff is that if we're talking about that now, mm -hmm. what was this Mexican immigrant possibly of an opera singer or possibly of a prostitute? Because that's the two stories that are told oh, wow. over. Is what was her experience in the silent era? Oh, I would love to Why know. Why do we think that she got to the point where she was willing to take all those pills, right? Mm, and so she's got, it's like, she's, she's like, oh, good. I'm glad you guys are ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, uh, one of the things when she told me where Lupe lived, and then the DP, Warren DeFranco, Stephanie St. Sanchez and one of our art directors, uh, we went out to see a movie, uh, like a midnight movie on Be the, at the New Beverly. Okay. And I'm not gonna lie, we were on a little bit of a psychedelic experience. Ooh, girl, okay. <laughs> and so I gave our driver the address and I was like, take us there. And it was her house. Okay. And then, you know, that became the opening for our project. We found her house. She, it was definitely like inviting. And then when the person who was working on it, he goes, I've never had this weird warping thing happen, but I think we should just keep it. I don't know. I swear to God, this film's haunted. Was wow. he on a psychedelic too? <laughs> Not at the time, but on the night, yeah. So, okay. you know, yeah. I mean, I think we're all going to be on psychedelics pretty soon. Yeah. That makes it all a lot easier. With Lupe. <laughs> I'm getting lit with Lupe. That should be a new song. Oh, I, you know, I, 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 I think. I, I, yeah, that, that'll, be, that'll be a spin off. <laughs> I, I think she would be very proud and very excited to not only be a part of it, but continue. It's a very, it's, it's a wickedly fun coming of age uh, story, sure. which. You know, you don't see very often with Latinos. Now, I so. think it's really interesting, too, that you were able to get actresses from Mi Vida Loca, which oh, I know. is How exciting as within that, the right? Latin community. I think, you know, it's That's for me, film. it's a cult film. And that was what we wanted to, like, in, in, in embody was cult film. But that, you know, that's one of the first movies that I, as an adolescent, remember seeing where we had Latinos as leads. Like, they're, yeah. back in that time, that was about, like, the early 90s. Uh, yeah, I want to yeah, say 93, 94. Mm -hmm. I don't remember really many other movies that no, had Latinos other than Mi Vida Loca, you know? Yeah. So um, how did you, did they find you or did you find them? How did it work? Well, when we, the creators and I were talking about who is Bloody Maria, who is the Virgen, we were like, oh, oh, maybe it's this person with the name and people threw out that person with the name. And like Elvira was oh, mentioned. Oh, that would be so fun. <laughs> and so we were like, but what about like, you know, and then I think Angel, Angel Aviles, uh -huh. I think she posted something about their friendship. And we were talking about how this project is ultimately about Lupe Velez, Bloody Maria, bringing together these two opposing forces. Sure. Because we should not be fighting each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be bringing it together. Okay. And, and, they, and they bring together these two opposing strong entities. And I think that uh, the, I saw a thing, or Stephanie saw a thing online with the two, um, Sadie Lopez and okay. uh, Angel, sure. and it was about their friendship. Okay. And, and we were like, oh, we should really reach out to them. Okay. And so one of our producers reached out to them, we made a connection, we sat over tacos. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like your kind of meetings. But you're very, be, being very diplomatic, because I'm like, these ladies, you know, they've got a rough edge to them. Are they, and they're, and what is it, sharing the joystick? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. Is there going to be a Jerry Springer beat down on this <laughs> show? <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> wait, 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 the the wait, 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 they're already getting down. Yes. Show them the boots, please. Show, we gotta show the shoes because the I think here. Yeah, I think shoes tell a lot about uh, a person. So this is how <laughs> ready we are for a showdown. Oh, yes. Whoa! Ay, Dios mío, mata tu carachas. It's a shoe off. <laughs> it's a shoe off. I'm ready. I'm ready. So much for joining us. Don't kick us with the boots, all right? <laughs> yes. And don't kick us off your screens, folks. We'll be back with more of the zoo.
fan of the show before uh, the offer came in. I saw season one. I binge watched season one. Uh, and so when it came in, I was like, yeah. And I was just happy that I was I was in a drug deal and I got to speak English. <laughs> I was just happy Good about for you. that. Yes. And but literally because we have a cop here. <laughs> Someone touch from, touch you know, from the uh, federal, uh, what, what department would you say your, your character is in? This is the Dorchester Police Department. Ay, Dios and they are fresh, sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Mr. Eddie Martinez from the new season of The Sinner. Welcome to the zoo. Let's give it up for me. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate so what is it like joining uh, the show? It's already been on several seasons, and now you're you're joining it, and uh, it's a really juicy show, let me tell you. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, I was stoked. I was stoked. I was a fan of the show before uh, the offer came in. I saw season one. I binge-watched season one uh, on Netflix on, like, one night, I think. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> and so when it came in, I was like, yeah. And I was just happy that I was I was in a drug deal, and I got to speak English. <laughs> I was just happy Good about you. that. Yes. And be a fan of the show, and I'll be a part of it. I was the stoked. Trail I think I have shingles from watching the trailer. <laughs> I have to tell you, it is so, I was on the edge of my seat. Is it that energy as like infectious when you're on the set as well? It is, man. Everyone on that set, the cast and crew, everyone was really cool. Everyone was like uh, really nice. And I was kept looking. I was like, there's got to be somebody here. But no, everyone like from the top down, from the showrunner sure. down to everyone, everyone was really cool. So it was like exciting to go to set. Like the bad part was like, oh, I'm only working three days this week. Oh, oh like, man. Yeah, I got to be better. Right. love that though. Um, and, then, and, then, and then the other thing is that like the scripts, like from, you're, you're right, like from looking at the trailer, I haven't seen anything, but I, from reading everything, like I kept reading the scripts, and I was like, "This is gonna be really good. I can't it's wait juicy. to see." It. And, and it's season three. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, how is this season gonna uh, differ from previous ones? Uh, well, I mean, the, the the season, the show, the premise of the show, like departs from the traditional who done it, and it delves more into like why, why yeah. someone committed a crime, and it it builds on that foundation. But I think this season it kind of explores more. Uh, on the uh, everyday tragedy or, or, or trauma of someone's life and the, the psychological or sometimes even philosophical reasons why a uh, seemingly normal person would, would uh, be driven to the edge to lose control or question their morality or, or, or the meaning of life, if that makes sense. I feel like yeah. it's like Dateline, but from the perspective of the suspect. You know, it's kind of like, like you said, it's like they've turned you know the tables maybe, a bit. Maybe a little bit, a little bit. I like to think of it as kind of like a blend between a, a thrilling mirror, a thrill Thrilling murder investigation yes. and uh, and raw character drama. Okay, you know, like it, it really delves into the character the characters of the show, which sure. I, I think it's like it's a, it makes it a good ride and it, and it gives the opportunity for some standout performances like Jessica Biel in season oh, one yeah. and this season Matt Bomer and oh, I don't yes. know, Chris Messina like uh -huh. the dynamic those those two guys have with Bill Pullman and Jessica uh, Jessica Hex who's another wonderful yeah. actor her and Bill Pullman and then uh, Parissa Fitenley plays uh, uh, Matt Bomer's wife like sure. it was such I was just when that first table reading I was like. Like, oh man, I gotta bring my A game. Like everyone was so <laughs> right. good. No like pressure. it makes you, yeah, yeah, it makes you want to like it gets you excited. Like you say, before e e before everything even started, I was already so excited about it. Now, did Matt show you any magic mic moves? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't. He didn't. Darn. But I got to not see. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe for season four. <laughs> but I got to see him with his shirt off. Just to oh make my you guys, god! Make guys jealous. Know. Make everybody <laughs> jealous. You guys ever need an extra? Let me drink some, some of this water. <laughs> <laughs> and you play Vic Soto. Yes, I play so, Detective Vic Soto. Are you yes. a lot like Vic? Uh, uh, was it a stretch for you to play Vic? Uh, no, I, I think it was kind of like uh, uh, art imitating life or life really? imitating art. It was like very parallel, uh, parallel lives, I guess. Um, Detective Vic Soto is a is a former Marine, a new rising star in the Dorchester Police Department that works alongside Detective Ambrose, a Bill Pullman's character, and he want he wants to learn from Detective Ambrose. He wants to like be on the case with him and, and Ambrose is a very like a loner kind of guy you know? and I think in real life it was the same thing like I was the new guy there I'm like mm -hmm. I'm working with Bill Pullman and I'm like I'm, I'm dying to learn from him. I'm sure. learning and yeah. so it was kind of like parallel lives Detective Soto and me you know yeah. Yeah. I'm a former Marine too I was so about to right. say yeah. yeah how long were you doing that for I was only in the reserves and I was in it for three years I was supposed to be in that's it that's a long time though 
Well, you, I was supposed to be in it for six years, but okay. then I injured my shoulder, okay. and I, 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 I was supposed to get surgery. I didn't get it fixed. Okay. And uh, after a while, the Marines gave up on me, and they were like, all right, oh. you, we, I, so I got a medical discharge, but I, and, and I ended up going nowhere. But but just to get in, isn't that like a really tedious process? Like, don't you have to be kind of like man of steel to get into the <laughs> Marines? I'm like, I know I wouldn't be able to even like pass the test to get in there. Uh, yes, you well, I mean, I, No, 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 sorry. I may look cute, but no, I don't think I'm going to, uh, you know. Uh, well, you would look so good. Mental, you would look right? good. Like, well, thank you, know, you thank you, you very much. much. Yeah, well, like, what, what kind of, what did well, they I mean, make yeah, you do? Well, yeah, it's the same thing. In? When you enlist, I went to boot camp. I Oof. went to a MOS training. And then instead of getting deployed, I went to a, uh, in, I'm from New York. So okay. I, was, I went to a reserve unit in New York. Okay. And uh, and then that's it. That's it. But I didn't, I didn't get deployed anymore. Wait, what's an MOS training? Uh, it's like your job, like your job in the in, in the service. So okay. they they call it MOS, but it's it's your job. My job was a uh, I was a mechanic or a, a oh, Humvee nice. driver. Okay. That was, that Here was in entertainment, we call it man Thank on you. the street. I was like, I wasn't sure if it was you know the man on the street marine. <laughs> he went up to him, like, do you like this camouflage? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. the streets of New York. <laughs> now, where did you guys film this season of The Sinner? It was in New York. Oh, it nice. It was uh, in New York City and some outskirts of in upstate New York. But you live here in LA. Yeah, I, l I live in Long Beach. I live in oh, Long wow. Beach. Oh, wow. LBC. LBC 562. Right. There you go. Yes, right. Are you I'm from Long Beach, too? I'm literally like border. I'm Paramount. Oh, there you yeah, go. I've been crazy. there. I go to the movies there all the time. Nice. Out there. I want me. My wife is a flight attendant for JetBlue, oh, and, yeah. okay. and their base is in, in Long Beach. Yeah, Long cool. Beach Airport. So when Best airport. we transferred from New York, we're like, oh, let's go to Long Beach. I didn't know anything about Long Beach except Snoop Dogg. Oh, that's no. right. And Jenny yeah. Rivera is from Long Beach as Jenny well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can your uh, wife hook us up Nicolas with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is also what? from Long Beach. Oh, I did with his? I don't know. And uh, Carmen Diaz, I think. Yeah, Carmen Diaz. Diaz. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know about Nicolas Cage. I okay, we'll keep on talking about Long Beach when we come back from the commercial break. We'll be back with more Eddie Martinez right here on the zoo. Don't go anywhere. Even them, it, it was, you're, you're, you're doing your scene, you're in the, and after, Bill Pullman is the nicest guy you could ever meet. Same thing with, with Matt Bomber. So with me, I, it, it wasn't hard, man. It was, it, was, it was easy. Again, it was such a fun set and such a... We're back on the zoo, and we have to correct ourselves. We, it's Cameron Diaz. It's Cameron Diaz. Said who's from Long Beach? Cameron's her cousin. Car yeah, right? <laughs> 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 La Cholita Carmen Diaz. Mi prima, mi prima. Mi prima, mi prima. Now, I got to ask you, been, you've been on Orange is the New Black. You've done so many different projects. How do you prepare differently for each role? Uh, I mean, it, I think it's different for each project, but usually I start... Um, I start like building a, a life, like writing out like a whole history for for the character. And what helps me like dive into the character, like people say, is music. I think really? like, yeah, I think like the music that someone listens to or the genre that they like kind of builds their personality. Mm. So I pick what kind of music this person would be listened in high school or listen now, mm. and then I start listening to that type of genre and music to get into the character. So I mean, at least that would helps me. So what was the music that you were listening to for this character? So I made Detective a uh, Amber. Slipknot. Slipknot, <laughs> <laughs> you said. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would have worked better. I don't know. But I made him like that. He that he liked uh, because he's very similar. Like this is one of the characters that I think was very similar to the way that I am in real life. So I made him really close to the music that I listen to, which is hip hop. Okay. And I don't listen a lot to rock, but I made because he was in the Marines and he and he went to Afghanistan and he was. I made him that he liked uh, rock and hip hop. So I listened to a lot of like. Uh, That's late 90s or 2000s rock and hip-hop. Yeah. That's interesting. I've never heard of a method. I mean, I've never heard of that method, like listening yeah, to music. Yeah, I'm really impressed by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take that in to well, my, my little You heard it here first. first me. I'll, I'll admit, like, really? the music, yeah, like, I'm, if I'm going to an audition for, like, a, a character in a certain era or from a certain country, I'll try to listen to music from that era or that country just to kind of get into the character. Gives you that headspace, right? Yes, that of course. Mood. So, yeah, well, I mean, that's it a, helps that's me. a tip for the actors now that's if you're right. watching this. Here we go. I'm, I'm going to take that into my auditions <laughs> now. <laughs> Right. Now, this show is super know, know dark yeah, and <laughs> super heavy. So, like, how? What is it like when you leave? Like, how do you? Like, do you feel? Does everybody, you know, have to lift their spirits up? when the scene is done shooting? Because it's a very heavy show. Right, it is. And no, no, I didn't have a lot of hefty, um, heavy lifting. It was uh, really uh, Matt Bomer and, uh, and, and Bill Pullman. They had a lot okay. of, and I think also Parissa. So I didn't have a lot of heavy lifting, like you say, but even them, it, it was, you're, you're, you're doing your scene, you're in the, and after, 
Bill Pullman is the nicest guy you could ever meet. Same thing with with Matt Bomber. We could be. That's there. what they say about all criminals, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I mean, it, I don't think he plays the criminal. I, he just he plays. Uh, I mean, sort of like the the victim, someone who's going through. Uh, uh, something tragic in their life like sure. re, re, uh, rearranging their beliefs or, sure. or their morality but which it is heavy like you said but again like this guy would be in it putting his headphones on being in it and like knocking it out of the park and after like we'd be having a nice conversation normal really nice down nice. to earth same thing with, with wow. bill pullman so with me i it, it wasn't hard man it was it was it was easy again it was such a fun set and such a cool project to be a part of like like the the showrunner derek simons he's an that, that i actually thought the same thing you did i was like i can't believe like i talked to this guy he's such a nice guy the, the minute i sat in his office we like i i told him things that i only tell my wife oh <laughs> like, damn that's a deep deep conversation, honey. <laughs> like, like he was really that yeah. that that open and welcoming right. and then i read the stuff that him and his writers write and i'm like wow this guy's got some going on in there right. but like he's such a nice right. yeah and nice, your nice kids guy. are in the green room they're adorable yeah have they seen the show well, I mean, it's going to premiere February 6th on USA, okay. that, but they haven't seen it. Uh, I, I do let my kids watch I got stuff that I've been on, which they oh, wow. wouldn't they be allowed think? to watch. Well, because they want to be actors, too, so I wanted I was about to ask if they wanted to be actors. Yeah, well, they have an audition right after this. Ah. That's, why, that's why I brought them along. They better that's be running lines right, right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and listening to music. There you go. He's like a stage dad. I'm, I'm, I'm like the low hands. I, mean, I put the kids to work. I put the kids to work. No, you're not like Dean. You're sober. So. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. But anyway, I let them watch all the. I usually play the bad, the bad guy, yeah. and I let them watch all the crazy stuff I do, so they okay. could understand that it's, uh, it's just fake. That it's, that it's, you know, like it's, it's, it's movie making. Sure. It's movie magic. That's yeah. good though, so that the kids, you know, get kind of a feel for what the business really is like. You know, they're not just gonna go in there blindly. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, and I want to make sure, like, I, I, I make sure that I tell them, I, like, I tell my daughter, which she, the little one that you met, which she says it all the time, I think, it's funny, I tell her, don't be a fan of people, be a fan of people's work. Oh, <laughs> Because sometimes yes. you meet actors, really talented actors that are really not nice people right, in real right. life, and I hate when people idolize actors. I, right? I feel you, yeah. Sometimes uh, I met people in person, and I'm like, mm, they're not as nice as I thought they, they would say, be. Right? Yeah, it's a big letdown. Yeah, they always say, oh, when you meet, you don't want to meet your idol. You don't, because you just, you're Mike. Get disappointed. Yeah. Have I been idol? No, I have not. No. <laughs> except no, except Matt Bummer, he is beautiful in real oh, life. Me. Is Thank you for <laughs> reassuring me <laughs> of that. I've never <laughs> met him in person, but uh, I would like to. Maybe we can stop by the set sometime. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send him a message for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let him know that he's got fans here. Now, um, you you know you are taking the kids to uh, auditions, acting classes, um, and what about like culturally? I mean, I know that you're from Colombia. Um, have they been to the motherland yet? Or yeah, yeah, yet? yeah. I try. We try to take him every summer. Really? Oh, in July. Cool. For my father's. Uh, my what? father lives in Colombia, and his uh, birthday's in July. Nice. So I make sure my wife and I make sure that we go to Colombia every July. Is she Colombian too? No, she's from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Epa. And they've been there too. Yeah, and she takes him to Puerto Rico How too. Cool. Uh, That's to beautiful. Keeping the grandma. culture alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they enjoy it though? Because I know sometimes kids are like, "Oh my goodness, my parents would take me to my home country, to their home country, like during the summer." Yeah. And it was so boring. It was like I had to be, like it was like torturing the kids. Yeah. Or do they enjoy it? No, they do. I'm yeah. lucky. My kids are nice. They're cool. They do. They like it. They get. They get excited about it. They what want part to be of I'm from Bogota, okay. which is the capital, the city, but my father lives in Barranquilla. In oh Cartagena. my God, that's where my family's from. from yeah, yeah, from Barranquilla, yeah. <laughs> from the coast. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah, you know who else is from there? Shakira's from Shakira's there. Shakira's from Sofia Vergara. Vergara. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to think, are there any other? Carlos, Carlos, ¿cómo se llama? Carlos Vives is from Valledupar. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Like, yeah. close, but no Where's Maluma? Oh, well, from Medellin. 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 Yes. Medellin. Yeah. Okay, cool, nice. I love it. I love that you're keeping the culture alive with your kids. Where, so where are you from? Are you? Mexico. Well, nací de aquí, pero mis padres mexicanos. And you go visit them? Yeah. I, the same thing. My parents never took like that, that culture away from us. We went every summer, got to know their roots, cool. and, and I love it. You speak it. Spanish fluent, I do yeah. Speak and you Spanish. too? Yeah. Ah, oh, see, that's and good. And they do too. Wait, kids. were your parents stage parents, Gabby? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Did no. they take you to auditions? No. No, I took myself later on in life when okay. I was like 18. I started doing the whole industry. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. But how lucky Italy, are right? Italy. I'm Italian. I, I don't Italy speak Italian. Italian. <laughs> I barely speak English, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm working on that. Yes, it's all Speak Italian? Uh, basically, we just say, you know, marinara sauce. <laughs> and, uh, can you cook Everything Italian? Like I don't do anything. Oh, I'm basically I know like anything. a cat. <laughs> I, 
I even lick myself. All right, but <laughs> you're horrible. What I, what I want to ask is, so I mean, it, it must be so lucky to have you know a parent that's in the industry and is able to guide you. Like, what advice do you give them outside of like the work? Like, do you like teach them to like character study? Like, how do you teach them to really hone their craft? No, no. If I'm being really honest, I want them just to have fun. I say, Good. if you want to go on auditions, you can go on auditions for fun, for commercials, so you can have money for your college fund. Nice. But to take it serious, no. Like, I want them to be kids, to have fun. If later on, the older one, if later on she wants to do acting, then yes, we'll, we'll, we'll delve into that later on. But right now, I want them to be kids. I and if they do that. it, it's just I for fun. too. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And we're... <laughs> and we had a lot of fun with you, Eddie. Thank you for being on our show with us. Best of luck with the season of the series. Thank you. February 6th on USA. Where can they follow you? Uh, what, uh, Eddie Martinez 11 on Instagram and Fabulous. J Eddie Martinez on Twitter. Oh Jenny Martinez. All right. Well, we want to thank all of our other guests as well who have stopped by the show. The ladies of Bloody Maria. Folks, remember to follow us on the line at The Zoo on LA TV and check us out on all our social media platforms. See you later. Ow.